Hey everyone, I'm I'm trying to use different word than excited. I keep saying I'm so excited, but this is like I'm always excited to interview, especially friends that have written amazing books. Jody Cohen's on the podcast again today. To talk about this. I just was telling her beautiful book, essential oils to boost the brain and heal the body. And it's like a just yeah. I mean, thanks for doing this. This is a like how many years were you working on this research on essential oil? You know, it's, it's funny, uh, probably since I started the company in 2012, but um, it, I, it wrote itself very quickly because I had been doing the research for years mm -hmm. and I had different blogs that I was just able to weave together. Yeah. So it's kind of, what's your mission with those books? I know we've talked a little bit, but just the the ability to boost the brain, heal the body. Why did you feel like you had to put this all together? Because there's such a, a well, need. It, it's three this. things. It's that people don't realize like the brain is really neglected because it's really hard to access. You know, molecules need to be super small and fat soluble to cross the blood brain barrier. That's why essential fatty acids work so well because they can actually get into the brain. Oils have the same capability and you can use them in very specific ways to really help. Um, calm inflammation and activate, um, like kind of calm your stress response, support sleep. There are so many things that you can do that are really easy and accessible that people don't really know you can do. And yeah. so that was the goal is just empowering people with really accessible strategies to kind of address the underlying imbalances in their system. And I know we both went through the nutritional therapy association and they've got their pillars and foundations. And as I started to practice with people, I started to notice different pillars and foundations. I started to notice that people, almost every single person who crossed my path had one of three, if not all three things out of balance. They were kind of stuck in the stress state of the nervous system. They weren't sleeping well, meaning that they either were having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. And they weren't really able to, um, the toxins weren't all leaving the body. Either they were getting congested in the lymph, the liver, the gallbladder, getting reabsorbed in the gut, but somehow the garbage kept recirculating and making more work for the detox organs. And when those, those three things lend themselves especially well to essential oils. And so when you're able to kind of help your body shift into the um, calm safety state of the parasympathetic nervous system, when you're able to fall asleep and sleep through the night, and when you're able to shepherd the toxins out of the body, so it actually leaves the body, a lot of the other symptoms fall away. Mm -hmm. and, and the other two things that I noticed where people were lacking energy and uh, their immune system was either overreacting or underreacting. So the goal was to kind of point out that the big headline news that I'm seeing, help people understand why that's going on. Because I think once you understand what's happening, your compliance increases because you suddenly recognize like, oh, that I don't, I don't want that. I, I can take responsibility and accountability for that. I can help to shift that. And then just giving them easy tools, either recipes that they can make themselves if they already own essential oils, or, you know, we offer all of them pre-made if they want to buy it, but just really giving them another tool that's pretty easy, pretty accessible. You can carry it in your purse. Doesn't mm -hmm. require invasive surgery. Doesn't require radical lifestyle or dietary changes. Just a little small um, tweak with a big impact. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is so like easy to do. And it's just so attractive to use essential oils because I find as an FDM practitioner and merging the nutritional therapy and lab testing together and creating a protocol, we work, you know, on the nutrition and work on those foundations, nutritional therapy, but always it comes up, you know, building their immune system and detoxification and just everyone's got so much inflammation and stress is on all the time, especially our past year, but all these external stressors, how so easy it is to just breathe in an essential oil is so fascinating how effective that is because oh, yeah. so many pills i don't even know if they work and no one wants to take like 20 different supplements a day and i find it, just get essential oil how much it will help supplement what you're already doing well you, know, if you think about how things get into the system and into the brain if you're ingesting something it has to go through the whole digestive process then mm -hmm. be processed through the liver then it finally gets into the 
bloodstream and it can circulate into the whole body. When you smell something, it literally goes directly to your brain immediately. Yeah. Like smell is a big safety gauge. You smell food, you smell water, it keeps you alive. So it has kind of VIP access to a part of the brain called the amygdala. All the other senses are routed through the thalamus first. You know, and, and what people don't realize, the reason cocaine is snorted through the nose is because it gets to you quickly. Like, um, you know, yeah, it's method <laughs> of assimilation is usually the fastest. That's why they mm -hmm. do anesthesia that way. So people don't really, they really discount mm -hmm. oils and, and even transdermal application. You know, most people know, oh yeah, hormonal creams. I put my progesterone cream or whatever on my arm. They don't realize that you can use stimulatory oils like an acupuncture point, a reflex yeah. point, and it triggers a response really quickly. Well, I love that how you explain all that in the beginning of the book. It's just the science behind it is, you know, you don't, you know, about essential oils and we always hear, you know, put it behind your ear, the vagal tone and help shift to parasympathetic, but to understand the why is what I really love the beginning of the book for. It's like, Oh, really? I didn't even know that. So if you really like to geek out and understand how essential oils work, I think that's a great first part of the book. Is it? you know, the main part of it, but that's just to understand the whole process. And then we go into the, the five steps to helping heal your brain, you know, calming anxiety, say sleep better and reduce inflammation to regain control of your health is the subtitle. And I think that is just such a key thing. Everybody I work with as doing health coaching full time now, and I'm working for Ben Greenfield and we do all the labs and just work on the I whole person. Ben Greenfield. Oh my that God. podcast we did was so good. We listened to it on our car ride home from Santa Barbara the other month. I'm like, God, that was such good stuff. Um, he, he's such a crazy genius. I really, he is so smart. you know, like Ben Greenfield, the Tis Karazian. I love the people that are actually in the field. Like he basically crash test dummies, everything on himself. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and then he's like, why does that work? Which is kind of the way I look at the world. Like I like it. You know, I, I know I, I get a little nerdy with the science, but what I've noticed with people is that once they get it, you know, like mm -hmm. even with kids, if you're like, okay, you play baseball, you want to be better, which means you need to like, your, your body needs to move faster, right? Yeah. Well, guess what makes it move faster? You know, blood sugar and oxygen. So if you can <laughs> increase the oxygen by making, you know, oxygen travels through these tunnels, your veins, if we make them a little bigger, then mm -hmm. the oxygen gets there faster and you're going to do better. And they're like, oh, like if you can spell out why it works and how it helps people, uh, compliance goes way yeah. up, you it know, does. and it's kind of like, I, I know so many people that are like, oh, I spend thousands of dollars on supplements and I don't take them. Well, if you don't take them, it's yeah. not going to help you. I like, know so many clients well, don't get better. Oh, I know the kale's just sitting in my fridge, but I don't eat it. Okay. Yeah. You feel good because you bought it, but it, <laughs> the next step is actually doing something with it and eating it. It's like the oh, broccoli sprouts and growing them, but then now eat them. <laughs> I know. I know. So I've, I've noticed that when people understand how it helps them, they're more likely to comply with it and do it. Yeah, I know. So there's so much to talk about, but I do want to talk about what I keep talking about on the show is just these internal stressors that we don't know about unless we do yeah. lab testing and how the essential oils can help so much because, you know, you're talking about the gut brain connection, improving the bay, the vagal nerve toxic, how it can be toxic. If we yeah. can talk about that and then heavy metals, antibiotics, the virus, bacteria, mold. I mean, I think that's such a huge area to focus on the biotoxins in just our environment, just how many people are struggling and they don't know why, but how this yeah. can be a simple way to help that process. Well, you know, one, there, there are a lot of blind spots, right? Like one of the big blind spots is um, oral health, you know, a yeah. lot of people have amalgams and, you know, they don't even think like, oh gosh, they're off gassing, you know, yeah. or we have cavitations, you know, root canals, or, you know, when they take out our wisdom teeth, sometimes they leave a little hole and the mouth is actually kind of the hot bread for, um, you know, all of the toxicity and the exit route of draining this toxin from the mouth is along your jawline. It's called mm -hmm. your trigeminal nerve. So it's trying to kind of exit and then it intersects with a bunch of other nerves. Your, your neck is the biggest bottleneck in the body, right? You know, mm -hmm. ideally you're sleeping. When you sleep, your brain shrinks because it can be off duty and can have time to clean up. 
and um, your lymphatic system in combination with your brain cells, your glial cells, it's called the lymphatic system. It like literally car washes the brain, right? Clears out all yeah. the metabolic waste. And then the exit route, like I lived in New York during garbage strikes, you put your garbage on the street and it stays there and it smells and it's gross and you know, but if your neck is congested, you know, if, if you're sitting in the airplanes in the middle row between two linebackers, there's congestion. You can't put your arm on the armrest because there's no space, right? Mm -hmm. If your lymph has too much going on and, you know, the, the neck is out of alignment and the muscles are tight and maybe the veins are constricted, it's, it's like going nowhere. And so those toxins sit and the toxins that are trying to drain down the lymph from the trigeminal nerve also sit. And nerves have a really high affinity for toxins. So it kind of sits too long, it gets uptaken by the nerve, and then it causes this minor infection that you might not even know is there. Um, there's a Tufts neuroscientist named uh, Michael Van Eckler who calls it vagus nerve infection hypothesis. Hmm. And it kind of, you know, if you think of it, your vagus nerve is the information highway between your brain and your body, body and brain. So there's this minor infection in the main highway and it's sending a sickness signal to the entire body. So you go into sickness response, you have fatigue, you have pain so that you don't move, you know, you might be sensitive to other chemicals. It's really trying to kind of isolate you so it can heal and complete mm -hmm. that cycle. But if it's a chronic underlying issue, especially in the vagus nerve, you never heal, you never complete the cycle. And what's interesting is a lot of the practitioners I was working with, they were noticing this, you know, their muscle testing, they're like, everyone seems to have this vagus nerve toxicity, vagus nerve infection. So again, one of these underlying issues that no one's talking about. Well, how do you clear that out? Um, there's a researcher that I mentioned in the book, uh, Marco Ruggiero, and he was actually taking pictures, sonograms of the neck, looking at the lymph tissue, totally congested, pressing on the vagus nerve, causing all these problems. And he played with a lot of solutions and it was actually topically applied essential oils that help to kind of shrink down. You know, if you think of what oils do in plants, they help to move fluid. You know, the water is in the ground and the roots and somehow mm -hmm. the fluid gets to the leaves and they're beautiful and they have flowers or fruit, you know, it helps with movement of fluid. So it helps with the drainage down the neck. So all of a sudden the lymph is flowing, it's not compressed, it's not congested. The vagus nerve can kind of clear up toxicity. Um, the blend that I like to use to apply on the vagus nerve is a, a blend of clove and lime. Clove is very stimulatory and also is very high in this chemical constituent eugenol, which helps to kind of clear up toxicity. You know, clove is used in dentistry for a reason. And lime just happens to be a great carrier oil because it has small molecules and helps to get um, the remedy into the skin very quickly. So it acts like an acupuncture needle. Is that your parasympathetic blend that you sell? Yeah. Yeah. I bought it for my family all for Christmas. Like everyone needs one of these. <laughs> oh, I love that. It smells kind of Christmassy. It has kind of that, you know, clovey winter smell. Yeah. But I think, you know, what we've been doing, my husband and I, it's like a, our entertainment little routine at nighttime, part of our sleep hygiene routine is smelling the oil and then using like the hypothalamus and I need to get the circadian rhythm and the um, parasympathetic. And it's really fun to add this because we have aura rings and to see how our sleep is improved. So it's so fun kind of biohacking, so to speak, your sleep, because I'm all about optimizing the sleep especially since when you have adrenal exhaustion, fatigue stuff going on, you have trouble sleeping. So I have <laughs> priority number one is always get a good sleep because that was such a terrible time in my life when you've had it probably too, that you wake up at two in the morning and you just are wide awake. And so I think all these different essential oils, how to, how to stimulate, get that sleep cycle. And, but that's big part of what we're talking about is that detoxification and making sure all those pathways are clear. And I love always your, your analogies of, you know, clearing the highways and getting rid of that congestion, that traffic jam and make everything work because detoxification pathways is the other part of it is to have all those systems working and how the oils can help. Yeah. I think oil's biggest, they, they move stagnation, right? Mm -hmm. Like the body has physical, mental, and emotional stagnation. And, and it is like a traffic jam, you know, like 
I live in Seattle and uh, my daughter's uh, racing a lot in Portland. The biggest bottlenecks are Tacoma and Olympia because there's just so much congestion and traffic. And sometimes, you know, that one exit that gets congested, it can back up for miles. You know, the trip to Portland, it, it should take two and a half hours, but sometimes it takes four. Four, I know. Traffic backs yeah. you up. So it's that congestion. And if you time it right when there's not congestion or you can somehow clean that up, everything goes faster, gets to its destination faster. And so that's mm -hmm. really the goal of essential oils is to kind of help e even emotional stagnation, help you just move through things and process mm -hmm. through so that, um, you know, the good things get in and the bad things get out. So with going back to the mold and the parasites and is using just getting this, uh, the vagal nerve to be stim to stimulate the vagal nerve and improve that pathway that you're saying that helps or what other oils would help, you know, supporting the liver and the adrenals. And I mean, do we have to do the whole thing? I mean, it really, it kind of depends on what's going on with you mm -hmm. and it's not one size fits all, but I think yeah. they're sympathetic. So, you know, what most people don't realize is the operating system for your body is your autonomic nervous system. It controls all of your automatic functions, your breathing, your heart rate, your digestion, your detoxification. And just like your car, you have kind of an accelerator. You're feeling like there's danger that's the sympathetic branch of your nervous system and resources are allocated towards survival. And anything that's not critical towards immediate survival is kind of down-regulated, right? Mm -hmm. So digestion, detoxification, the ability to anti-inflame, turning on your immune system, not the priority. So not given the blood flow and the energy. And then when the danger passes, your body shifts back into parasympathetic and kind of takes care of maintenance and upkeep. But what happens is it's not, I don't see very many tigers running down the street in Seattle, but I do see a lot of people reacting to the news or their financial situation or relationship concerns or financial concerns, you know, all of these things, health concerns. We anticipatory stress, thought-driven stress kind of shifts us into I'm not safe just as much as the physical lion chasing you. And so what happens is we get a little stuck in that gear and we can't get out of it. And people say, oh, you're stressed. And you're like, but I have a job and a, a spouse and children and friends. And I need to you know, keep the plates all spinning. Like I can't drop anything. And that's true. You know, it's not that you need to change your circumstances. You just need to change your response. You know, like um, oftentimes driving is an example. You're driving in traffic and someone cuts you off and Sometimes you don't care, whatever. You're not in a hurry. You're having a good day. It doesn't matter. Maybe they're in a hurry. I hope they get there safely. Like you really, it doesn't phase you in the slightest. Another day, someone cuts you off, same exact situation and four letter words are flying out of the mouth. <laughs> the only mm -hmm. variable in that moment is you and how you respond. And so being able to literally, like you would shift a bike, manually shift from I am in danger. I'm going to overreact to everything. I'm going to yell at my husband over something stupid that I'm going to regret later too. Uh, wow. I'm kind of feeling annoyed right now, but yelling at my husband is probably not going to be the best solution. So I'm just going to kind of take in my situation, take in my, assess my options and make the best choice I can and kind of feel good about it. Like, look at that. I didn't, I didn't ever react. Like, no, nothing got blown up today. No, no blood, no fire, you know? Yeah. But that's, you know, what we find as health and fitness coaches that people come to us that they're struggling, they're trying to exercise to get healthy. And they're really, I find people as I strive to teach people to be fit and healthy from the inside out. So even though you're working out, you're doing your strength training, doing your HIIT training, you're going for walks, getting sunlight exposure, doing all those things that you're, you think are the right things to do, but you still can't get the desired results. So I think a lot of those people that are struggling, trying to lose weight, feel their best, you know, look their best and just live their best life there's always important to kind of look a little deeper under the hood, but also figuring out the why. And I think it's how we're living life as a race and just be that, you know, addicted to busyness. And what is that? Dr. Mindy says the, the rushing woman and how we're just in overdrive all the time and how that trickle down effect, keep doing that, that leads to all this internal stressors, who knows what comes first, but they all you know connect and twine together that it's so I think essential to learn the information that's in your book, how you can 
understand the why and how your gut and your brain's connected to having that anxiety, to not being able to sleep, to not feeling recovered from a workout that I think it's why we look at kind of what I say, the holistic method, but you have to look at the whole person and kind of talk about what this, how this book helps people kind of get started and figure out, you know, the why and understanding those, those five steps. Yeah. And I think it really comes down to the 80, 20 rule, right? Yeah. You know, it's only really 20% of your effort that gives you 80% of your results. And so what I was really trying to do is look at, you know, people would come to me with all of these files and, you know, I have this SNP and this disease and I'm super complicated and no one can help me. And I would say, okay, maybe, you know, we don't know yet, but how's, how's your sleep? Are you sleeping? Yeah. Nope, not falling asleep, not staying asleep. Okay. How's your stress level? Like, what do you feel like during the day? What, you know, as you're doing these exercises, are you in yoga? Like, I love this. Or are you thinking about your checklist? Like after this, I have to go to the supermarket. Then I have to do this. Then I have to do this. And it really, every single time it came down to these three things. They were either not sleeping, they were stuck in stress or their drainage pathways. Like it was pretty clear that one of part of their detoxification was not working as well as it could. And as much as I love nutrition and think food is really important, I don't think that food helps with sleep stress and detox. I mean, uh, some foods can help with detox. It can certainly help with the liver support, but lymph, I, I feel like I, I was seeing this 80, 20 rule, like 80%, 100% of the people seem to get better when they did these three things, when they focused on their sleep, when they intentionally shifted their body into the parasympathetic state, when they supported, for, for most people, it's um, lymph seems to be, you know, lymph doesn't have its own pump and lymph responds really well to oils and especially lymph gets really bottlenecked um, on the neck, it drains 75% on the left side. So left clavicle, you know, and mm. kind of left side of the body. Mm -hmm. So when you just pause and really focus on like eat, sleep, move, you know, if you eat in the parasympathetic state, if you move your body, you move your lymph. If you add oil, it moves it better. Mm -hmm. And if you're sleeping well, like that, all of a sudden these symptoms are dropping off their radar. You know, their skin isn't as itchy. Uh, they remember the word they were trying to say as opposed to losing it. Their knee doesn't bug them as much. They uh, don't feel as anxious during the day. Like they see really immediate results. And yeah, you know, if you're celiac and you're continuing to eat pizza, that's probably a problem. But, you know, once you have that energy and you're feeling, you're seeing these results, then it's easier to fine tune. Like, oh, okay, I can start adding flaxseed to my diet every day. Oh, okay, I'll have lemon juice first thing in the morning. You know, it just, mm. it, it just gives them kind of those low hanging fruit, easy wins and make them um, have more energy to take on more. And I think that's when people are trying to get better and figure out a plan that's sustainable so they can follow something for 90 days or however long and, and restore their health is we have to make it simple. And yeah. I think it's so easy to give, okay, you need to do these 20 different things and you need to take these 20, 30 different supplements. And I think what you're talking about makes it simple and people will, keep doing it and build that habit of just all I have to do is smell an oil. It's like, yep. oh my gosh, it's I'm just focusing on eat, sleeping and moving. I got yeah. this, you know? Yeah. And then you can always layer on more, you know, there's a mm -hmm. reason with kids start simple. That start with simple addition, right? What's mm -hmm. one plus one. We're yeah. not doing algebra right now. <laughs> We're just focusing on that. Yeah. You know, once you kind of nail that and gain confidence, then you can move on. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think just that's what I've been even just on Instagram lately. I started sharing some of my meals. I'm like, it's not complicated. Here's some asparagus and here's a side of steak and barbecue burger patties or whatever it is. And people are like, oh, it's I'm like, yeah, it's not complicated, but it's the same thing of just eat, sleep, move, move outside and get that yeah. sun exposure. I think just, yeah, keep it simple. It's not so complicated to be healthy. And I think we need that right now in our world. It's like how to get healthy and improve our immune system. We've been talking about all year and more, but you know, how simple things like this can help us just get healthy, but how we just need a little reset and a reboot often and how simple we can do it by just using some oils instead. And sometimes that might work on top of everything else. 
Yeah. And I mean, it, it's funny because I get a lot of people that are like, I need everything. I want to buy everything. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like we just actually started a quiz. Like, I think it's much better. Like start with one oil, start with uh-huh. parasympathetic, maybe a kit of three, like start small. And then you can always add more. It's like, I want to cut my, I want to, I want short hair. No, let's start with an inch. Let's see what you think. <laughs> No, because you, can, you can't unscramble an egg. So let's always <laughs> kind of like, like start with the basics and we can add more from there. But people are really surprised. Like, oh, wow, who knew? Who knew that, uh, you know, now I have regular bowel movements. God, now I feel less anxious, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seems to, like, I, you know, people wear their aura rings. Oh, my, my heart rate variability is better. Like, you don't need to, I, it doesn't need to be hard. Yeah. So let's kind of go over those five steps. You just have the last little bit, just kind of summary what the, yeah. how you broke those up. I know we're yeah. running out so, of time. And, but. I, and I tried to prioritize, like step one is really just shifting your nervous system into the relaxation state. Cause then that turns on everything. It turns on digestion. You know, blood flow is routed to the arms and legs when you're in stress and away from digestion and detoxification. So it's kind of like trying to read in the dark, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like not as efficient. Um, And then the second step is sleep, really helping people to fall asleep and stay asleep. The third step is kind of uh, detoxification and drainage. So not just mobilizing toxins like, yay, it's a party, we're yelling fire in the movie theater, but actually making sure that they're shepherded out of the body and kind of walking people through what that entails. And then energy, you know, um, our stress response, there's another part of our brain, our endocrine system, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis that gets turned down when we're in stress. And when we're in stress, we sometimes, um, uh, the other endocrine organs like the thyroid get less attention and can start to have problems. So helping people to balance that, you mentioned the hypothalamus blend, which you can apply right here and kind of reboot your endocrine system. And then just immune modulation, helping your immune system, it Goldilocks it, right? It's Mm -hmm. not overreacting, it's not underreacting, it's reacting in just the right way. And it's the immune system reacting to uh, pathogens or toxins that trigger inflammation. So if you can calm the immune system, you can calm inflammation. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, that's a big thing is inflammation when, especially when I look at people's labs and even just look at our nutritional therapy assessment I give people too, is just most people are struggling with digestion and inflammation and gut distress. and. As simple as you said in the beginning, going back to just stimulating the parasympathetic nerve and also how we eat, I would say is so essential, you know, taking time to pause and reset and breathe and get into that rest and digest nervous system. But how how is our gut brain connected to that inflammation in our body? People like athletes are listening that are slow to respond yeah. from recover from workouts and how it's so connected. It's just crazy when you read the research. So digestion begins in the brain. The vagus nerve sends a signal to your mouth to release saliva. Saliva is the first step in breaking down proteins. Proteins are then broken down in the gut when the gut releases hydrochloric acid. And protein breakdown is really important for digestion and inflammation because if they're not properly broken down, meaning that if you're not in the parasympathetic state and the saliva and the hydrochloric acid are not released, then those proteins stimulate an immune response. The immune system thinks that they're pathogens and the immune system responds and then it starts creating inflammation. Inflammation is part of what the immune system does to kind of um, isolate and swell and bring more blood flow to the area. So if you can just even if, you know, use oils, do deep breathing, um, say a little prayer, feel grateful, anything you can do to let your body know we are eating, we are routing our blood flow to our organs of digestion. We are making sure that this food is properly digested, absorbed, and assimilated. That's one less potential uh, threat that the immune system needs to look at. And then that doesn't trigger inflammation. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I find too people's digestion going to the protein digestion, how that's related to what does protein break down to amino acids and how that's going to impact our neurotransmitters and just how impact that is on the brain and just how it just this whole chain of events happens. Yeah, we are a domino cascade. We are not living in isolation, but that's one thing that I really like about plants because they're very gentle. You know, plants are what they call adaptogenic, which means that they meet you where you're at. 
So mm -hmm. for example, if you're, um, you know, low in estrogen, they help give you more estrogen. If you're high, they bring it down. They just kind of modulate and meet you where you're at. And so it's very hard to have a reaction to plants because they really are just, you know, they're, they're part of nature. Nature is in balance and they're trying to return you to balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then just how the chronic inflammation in our gut inflammation, leaky gut and how that impacts our brain health. And, you yeah. know, we're going to run out of time, but a whole show to talk about melatonin, I think is fascinating oh, how yeah. melatonin in the gut and the brain just when I do Dutch tests on people, some people are so high in melatonin and we find this neuroprotective because they have mold toxicity on the oats test. And it's like, oh my gosh, how amazing is the body? To protect know, us. Melatonin, melatonin does more than just support restful sleep, but yeah. your question. So the vagus nerve is the information highway between the brain and the gut and the gut and the brain. It's what's telling the brain, oh, there's inflammation, release neurotransmitters like acetylcholine to calm the inflammation. So the more we can kind of help support healthy vagus nerve signaling, the more we can make sure that inflammation remains in check because the brain is kind of helping the gut um, send the right neurotransmitters, hormones, whatnot, to kind of calm the inflammation and settle it down. So that's, you know, and, and inflammation in the gut can affect the brain and vice versa. So um, that's another thing, you know, most of us are pretty good with our diet. Maybe we're taking probiotics or other supplements that can help with, with gut health. But the more you can combine that, layer that with kind of stimulating the vagus nerve so that it's kind of hitting the problem from both sides. You know, like if someone comes to you and says, I want to lose weight, I'm thinking I'm either going to change my diet or exercise. You're probably going to say do both, right? You know, the more you can lay, the more positive choices you can layer on, the faster you're going to get the results you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think just how we can measure our heart rate variability is a good way to see if, if we are improving or just yeah. do, you do any tracking to see, okay, am I actually, is what I'm doing helping? Am I, I feel better, but some people like to see data and yeah. to strengthen the vagal tone, do we look at HRV? Yeah, um, so heart rate variability, which is kind of the difference in your heart rate between your inhale and your exhale. If you ever go to the doctor and you know they're measuring your heart rate and they're like, okay, inhale, now exhale. They, they wanna see a difference between those. You know, The exhale is really what's important. That slows your heart rate down. And what that variability is, is a measure of how quickly you recover. How resilient you are, how, how able you are to bounce back. And so there are devices like aura rings that can kind of measure your heart rate, but parasympathetic tone, the more you can kind of calm your nervous system and access your parasympathetic branch of your nervous system, that correlates with improved heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like using, you know, it's more work, but putting the chest heart rate strap on and track doing like a five minute with sweet beat life I used to do with, uh, from HRV and then look at, you know, the aura ring does it overnight to so kind of see, but it's nice to look at the LF, the low frequency and the high frequency and see your variability, but, you know, getting an app of some heart rate variability app to really kind of look at you know, this, the breakdown of it, it's kind of fun to do. Yeah, and, and if you uh, if you just want to, you know, an, an easy way to do that too is to kind of assess um, your anxiety or your, your worry or your ability to problem solve, you know, scale of one to 10, how anxious am I right now? And then mm -hmm. to do something like, um, box breathing, you know, where you mm -hmm. inhale for a count of four, hold for a count of four, exhale for a count of eight, the exhale is always longer, you know, and do that um, for four or five cycles and just see how do I feel now, you know, and, and mm -hmm. your own gauge and measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like doing that at nighttime when I'm falling asleep or when I can't fall asleep and shut mind off. It's just, I always think of Ernie and Bird on Sesame Street. <laughs> I start counting sheep or ducks and I was like, hey, now I'm counting That's inhale. Daddy, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> see, Ernie and Bert, we can learn something from Sesame Street. I know. So I know we're going to get out of time to say we kind of we're short today, but the book itself, the last part kind of tells you different blends. So if people don't, if they want to make their own because I know some people are into, you know, buying their own, the young living yeah, they, or, or they all have, that. They, they have, have the their options. own in the house. Yeah. Yeah. I, my whole goal is to meet people where they're at, you know, yeah, like, I love uh, that. 
One of my NTA friends was working with a truck driver and she's like, okay, so when you're going, you know, at the truck stop on the road, jump by the Doritos, buy a hard boiled egg or an apple, you know? Yeah. So if you, if you have oils, if you love oils, if you just want new recipes, I give you all the recipes. If you're like, I'd rather you do it for me. I have formulas at Vibrant Blue Oils. So it's really just designed like happy to meet you where you're at. Yeah. I like that because some people I have friends, I'm like, you have to get this book. She's like, why? Well, I, I like, I'm, you know, been using for t- 10 years, the, um, I say yeah. vibrant blue, the, whatever the other ones are. And there are, there are a lot of great so, companies that people love. And if you let, you know, if it's working, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like keep yeah. using that. And I just give you new recipes. Well, yeah, so good. And there's tons of information for everyone, some good takeaways, but it's just, Again, such a, a beautiful book, and Thank I don't you. know the. I was looking at the book publisher. I mean, they. Uh, it's like something you just want to keep to look up. So you might not read it all at once, but you it's know. The funniest I'll... is it was. Uh, you know, obviously, it, it book publishing takes a long time. So this process started pre-COVID. So the plan was for this to be like a gift book. You know, like in the spa and stuff like oh. that. So it is. It's very pretty. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. So people wouldn't be leaving their house. (laughs) We'll put all the links in the show notes, but where is the best place for people to go buy it? Uh, Anywhere books are sold. Actually, if they want to go to my, um, they can go to boostthebrainbook.com slash gift and grab Mm -hmm. a free um, chapter on 25 ways to stimulate the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. And then it will link to, um, you know, there's Target, there's Barnes and Noble, there's Amazon, there's your local bookseller. So whatever makes you happy. Books and Barnes and Noble. I always forget books in a store. <laughs> That's what yeah, a novel yeah. idea. Let's support the bookstores and buy it there. Yeah, exactly. But Ontario Walls did the Fortif, so that's pretty special. She loves Dr. oils. Walls. She's been using oils actually longer than I have. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. she really talks about. And she's really interesting because she focuses on the flavonoids, the uh, secondary metabolites of um, plants, and ha- has her. Uh, part of her protocol is 200 different plants a year, but she counts oils and teas. Oh, she, that'd you know, be easier. So that, it definitely makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time today and give us a little quick overview of the book. And I hope everyone goes find it and get some information on the website too. We'll put those links in the show notes so you guys can grab them and then go learn how to improve your immune system and your mood and your blood sugar. And there's all sorts of stuff I got all tabbed in here. So enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you, I'm sure, some other time.